Hello, my name is Jim Owens and today I'd like to respond to a letter that a viewer sent in. Basically, she was asking me what I stood for. It seemed like uh, her impression was that a lot of the tapes that she had seen were about things that I was being critical of, but what in fact in a positive way I stood for. And that was a good question. I think mostly in a role like this, you see me being more critical because it's the nature of the beast. Um, but the critical element of what I say comes from a certain stance, a certain belief I have, and that belief is in Pareto optimality. That is, I believe in the power of the contract. I believe that free people should come together and under certain conditions, when they come together, if they sit at the table and discuss honestly and try and come to a resolution, they will get up better from that table. But that doesn't mean that I'm not an anarchist, not by any means. Nor is the, uh, is the group with which I'm associated, are they anarchists? If anything, I'm, I'm a bit of a centrist libertarian, and they have various views that make them centrist, but centrist in various ways and for other reasons. But for me specifically, since the question was directed toward me, let me explain that notion of proto-optimality. Let's say that I have a nice icy cold homemade tea, which is quite delicious by the way, and, uh, and you want my icy cold homemade tea. Now the icy cold homemade tea may be worth $1.50 to me because I have several more in my refrigerator and this one's quite good, but I'm willing to let it go for $1.50. You're, you've been outside and, and you're hot and to you this icy cold tea is worth $2.50. Fine. In a case like this, there is a Pareto optimal range at which we can make an exchange. If I let go of this tea for $2, I'm 50 cents happier and you're 50 cents happier. That's a Pareto optimal exchange. But in fairness, Pareto optimality only occurs if there are certain conditions that are met. And that's where government comes in. It comes in to ensure that those conditions can be met. For example, I must there must be some control about the information I give you about this tea. If this tea has some pollutant, some toxin in it, I have to reveal that to you. If I don't, that's a distortion in the market. I have to make that information available. And so the government has a duty to make sure that I'm telling the truth about my tea. It's got this in it, it's got that in it. Second, the government has an economic incentive, or rather we as a people have an economic incentive to make sure that I don't have a monopoly on, on not just the tea, but on everything that is fungible to the tea, everything that could be exchangeable for the tea. Because if I do, if I have a, if I have a pure monopoly, then I can distort the marketplace in a way that, that makes the, uh, the buying and selling of this tea unreasonable. Um, and that's especially true when we get to more central, more necessary items like insurance or whatever. Um, there are other aspects of uh, other Pareto distortions that the government needs to control. Again, a quick list off the top of my head. It needs to be able to control from monopolies, monopsonies. Um, by the way, monopsonies are when you have just one buyer. Oligopolies, when you have just a handful of sellers. Oligopsonies. Uh, it needs to be able to control for transaction cost, control for externalities. For example, if you're, if you're smoking cigarettes and you toss your cigarette butt onto the ground, in truth, cigarette smokers should pay for that cigarette butt, not society as a whole. So the government has a right, an obligation, and a duty to come in and charge you a tax that then has you paying for that cigarette butt. So it controls for external externalities, it controls for, it tries to minimize transaction costs, and of course it, it controls for, in the John Stuart Mill sense, it controls for any kind of action that causes, uh, that, that disobeys the harm principle. That is, I can't harm you, e I, I am free, but I can't harm you either economically or physically, uh, except perhaps to protect myself. So. Controlling for Pareto distortions, controlling for the harm principle, these are legitimate roles of government, and they're legitimate tax issues for government. My question is, when I look at the various issues I look at, is the government going beyond what is legitimate? And, are they, and insofar as they're doing what is legitimate, are they doing it in the most effective, most optimal fashion? 
And what I'd like to do is to engage in intelligent discussions about that very issue. Thank you for your letter, and thank you for your time.